Fay Farm is a game where you find a bottle washed up on the shore inviting you to an island. Taking the note up on its offer, you travel to that island where a whirlpool destroys your ship, leaving you washing up on the shore. The question remains though, did it start well? Well, the first thing you do is make your world, giving it a name before creating the character that will go along with it. The character creator isn't very good. With many androgynous hairstyles that lend itself far more to the feminine side, body types without labeling that all yet again make your character look feminine, and the worst part of all being the choosing of pronouns. In Starfield, I can't defend it because it's not meant for kids. This game, however, doesn't share that mature rating. Out of respect to the developers as well as you, I finished the creation of my character and moved on not letting a few seconds of immersion breaking ruin my enjoyment of the game. But if you're a parent, keep this in mind. It could be a sample of what's to come. That is why it makes a bad first impression. Now we are in the town of Azoria, where we meet a mayor named Merit, and she tells us about how excited she is to see us, that we have a home already, and that she's sending a welcome package to it in order to make up for the details about the island that she omitted from the note. She says, there's whirlpools surrounding the island, a never-ending blizzard in the mountains, an active volcano threatening to go off, wild magic that made junk animated which is locked into mines, and wild thorns that are probably huge and deadly, most likely foreshadowing what we as the hero will have to deal with. She gives you a map with the locations of people and places and sends you to your home. You run and jump through a bustling town, doing some parkour and getting a good feel of the movement and exploration. Once you make it to your house, you go inside and open the care package. She gives you a backpack to hold your inventory, that was pretty sweet of her. Exiting your house, you see her outside, but you check your mail first, where you see that note that she left in the bottle. After reading what we already know, we make our way back over to the mayor, where she tells you to name your home. Quick and easy, I like it. After giving you a set of tools, she tasks you with picking up herbs, cutting weeds, chopping wood, and gathering rock. Once you've gotten more than enough, you head back to Merit, where she tells you that things can be built indoors and outdoors, tasking you with creating a round woven stool within your house. Once you get that done, you talk to her again, and she tasks you with building a cooking fire, this time outdoors. You find a place clear from trees and tall grass, build a fire, and cook the greens you gathered earlier. Once finished, you tell the mayor of your cooking exploits, and she explains that cooked foods give better energy bonuses, and that you can mix and match foods to experiment with new ways to eat it. It also sells for more profit, giving you something to look forward to in your culinary future. Now it's time to plant. You are told you have all you need already in your shed, so you go and loot it immediately, or well, after clearing some more weeds. Focus man, focus! After looting your shed, you build some soil beds on the ground. She said three, but you do what you want, so you put down six. Plant the seeds, then water a couple before realizing maybe you shouldn't since it could be your next quest. Going back to the mayor, she tells you not to forget to water them, but it isn't a quest, so that's a bummer. She tells you to go meet Eddie the Mariner, so you go over and refill your water jug and jump on a giant mushroom where you finally see the thorns you were told about. Scary. After running through the town, picking up blueprints along the way, you finally reach Eddie. He gives you a fishing rod and tasks you with catching the fish, so you head down to his boat. You screw up this first time because you didn't realize it was toggle reeling, silly you, and you snap your line. Still reeling from that failure, you head over to some rocks and try your hand at fishing again. This time, although there's a struggle, you catch some salmon. Being a big old fan of salmon, you decide to catch another, in case you get hungry along the way. After talking to Eddie, he lets you keep his rod and tells you to speak to the beekeeper named Mel. So that's where you go. Mel ends up being a sweet old man just making sure everyone's treating you right before gifting you a net to catch some critters. You catch a couple of fireflies, a couple of moths, and a snail. 
all in a day's work. Returning to Mel, he says you can put your critters in a conservatory in the future, giving you something to look forward to because he's not going to talk about it now. Doesn't want to overwhelm you. That's sweet of him. If you put them in a conservatory, they'll give you gifts. But you can also sell them now, which is something that would be better explained by a woman named Pearl. So you parkour your way over to Pearl, and as she speaks to you, you make feminine movements. Reminds me of Babylon's Fall when they had body types instead of male and female, so you're an hour in and realize you were a female all along. Surprise! Pearl says you lay your items for sale out and then overnight, people will buy them in exchange for florins, the currency of this town. I like that theft isn't a fear here, it's kinda wholesome. You decide to sell two moths and two fireflies but keep the snail to name him Turbo. Don't worry, I'm not judging. You speak to the mayor right after and she tells you to get some rest, ending the chapter and forcing you home. So. Did it start well? It's complicated. The character creation is definitely more geared towards women and female characters, which, I mean, that's okay, but as a guy, it was pretty underwhelming, and I'm gonna put that out there. This is definitely my opinion, it is a nitpick by me, but it was something that I do need to point out in case you're a dude wanting to play it. Putting a beard on a character doesn't necessarily change the fact that the rest of them doesn't quite look right. Helmets and hats that could cover up your face and hair would be able to skirt around that issue, but this is a did it star well and I never found one yet so I can't really say that that is a problem solver either now this is rated E10 plus so the pronouns thing ah I don't know in my opinion it still shouldn't be something that a 10 year old should have to think about but that is fifth grade and you're going into middle school and this is when gender ambiguity and gender identity and sexuality and everything is getting thrown around willy-nilly so I suppose I can give it a pass. I'll give it a pass. Before I wasn't aware that the ESRB rating was 10 plus, but now that I am, we're good, okay? It's fine, it's fine. Before I thought it was E for everyone, but now that I know it's not, I apologize for earlier, even though seeing that did break immersion. I'll just give you a pass and move on because I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it due to the research I've done in the subject. They did a good job setting up the farming, the gathering, the pest catching, critter catching, whatever you want to call it, the fishing, the economy of the town, talking to people, meeting people, giving you a good setup of where you're at and the things that you're able to do while also talking about potential dangers, risks, and stuff that you could get yourself into in the future, setting up a reason to keep going. And there is combat, there isn't combat in what I showed you here, but there is combat in the game that I have seen and played now, so I will tell you that that is there. The combat does not affect whether or not I say if it started well, I just want to put it in there in case it's something you were wondering about. I really like the aesthetic of the game, I like the colors, I like the fact that it is a very wholesome vibe, even through the combat encounters. Everything does feel pretty wholesome. A game that is a little bit more relaxing and doesn't have huge world ending universe shattering stakes. Overall, it's a pretty fun game and they did a good job on their tutorial and setting up the rest of the world building and the rest of the game. For more news, reviews, and whatever we choose, stay tuned to Nerdsfeed. Have a great day. Thank you.